Today's lesson is chatting about streaming services. Hi everybody, I'm Roger. And I'm Mike. And today we're going to continue to chat about streaming services. Remember last time we had some conversations between Oliver and Esther, and Oliver was thinking of switching platforms because he wants to watch more documentaries, and a different service may provide more documentaries. And then in conversation number two, Esther was talking about upgrading her subscription because more people wanted to use her account. And so, of course, when you want to do that, you need to upgrade your subscription and pay more. Exactly right. Today, we're going to be looking at a different type of streaming service in our first dialogue, not video streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus, Apple TV Plus, but the other type, music streaming services. Anyone who's on Spotify or something like that will know all about these. So this is another way you can sign up for a low monthly fee, and you get basically unlimited entertainment delivered to any of your devices, your computer at home, your cell phone, your laptop, your iPad, something like that. And a lot of people like these music services. Not only can they get any songs they want to hear instantly, you know, coming from the cloud, they also get recommendations from the service. So things that you might not have heard of because, you know, discovering new music is a real joy for certain people, while others like to listen to the old classics. And in both cases, these services will have of hundreds of thousands, millions of songs probably for you to listen to. So let's check out what's going on in our first dialogue titled Generating a Playlist. Three, generating a playlist. Back at their office, Esther is listening to music on her headphones while working. Hey Esther, what are you listening to? It seems like you're really into that music. It's from a playlist generated by the streaming platform. It's tailored to my listening habits, and I find it helps me concentrate when I'm working. That's cool. So it's like your personalized music mix? Exactly. It's amazing how it can predict what tracks I'll like based on what I usually enjoy. I've discovered so many great new artists through this feature. It's like having your own DJ curating music just for you. I love that idea. I might have to check that out. 大家好，我们来看第一部分中的单字 generate。它是动词，意思是生成、引起或是产生能量的意思。例如 ，The new action movie is generating a lot of buzz online. 这部新动作片在网络上引发许多热烈讨论。或者 ，The power plant generates a lot of air pollution when it is running. 那座发电厂在运作时产生了大量的空气污染。接下来介绍动词 concentrate， 它有全神贯注或是集中心思的意思。举例来说 ，Naomi concentrates very hard when she is writing， so it's best not to talk to her。Naomi 写作时非常专心，所以最好不要跟她说话。也可以说 ，In this class， we will concentrate on improving your writing skills。在这门课中，我们将专注于增进写作技巧。再来一样介绍动词 personalize， 它的意思是为个人特质或是使具个人特色。在课文中 ，personalized 为过去分词做形容词用，表示个人化的。例如 ，YouTube provides a more personalized page when you open the app, since it tracks all the videos you've been watching. 当你打开应用程式时 ，YouTube 会提供更个人化的页面，因为它会追踪你观看过的所有影片。又或者是。Simon asked his trainer to personalize a fitness plan for him. Simon 要他的教练帮他设计一份个人化的健身计划。接下来看到 curate， 它是动词，指的是精心的编选或是策划。例如 ，The substitute teacher curated course materials for his first class. 那位代课老师精心选择他第一堂课要用的教材。或是 ，Many famous artists curated this large-scale art exhibition together. 多位著名艺术家共同策划了这次大型艺术展
Okay, so again, we've got a conversation between Esther and Oliver, and the title of conversation number three is "Generating a Playlist." Now, to generate just means to create something, like、uh, we use nuclear energy to generate electricity. And in this particular case, you just want to create a playlist. It's a list of all the songs you want to listen to, and then the service will play them to you or play them for you, one song after another. There you go. You can generate your own playlist by picking your own songs and putting it on the list, or the service can probably do that for you as well. So you're not just listening to sort of random songs; you're listening to songs you want to listen to. Back at their office, it says Esther is listening to music on her head. Phones while working. Okay, so pretty common situation. A lot of people these days at work will have headphones on while they tap and type away on their computers and things like that. Headphones are two devices that can either be attached and go over your ears, or can be individual and sort of you stick them into your ears. But in any case, headphones are for private listening, private listening of sound. So you're not going to bother your neighbors, not going to bother the people next to you or the people on the bus sitting next to you. Your headphones give you personal listening pleasure, and there's something a lot of people will wear while going to the gym, while working at home, while working on their phone, or working at their office, and that kind of thing, where you want to enjoy music but not bother others around you. Indeed. Okay. So again, you want to generate a playlist, and of course, headphones go over your head, whereas the earbuds go inside your ears, and we call them that because the little ends of them, the little rubber tips, look like the buds of a tree. And Oliver begins the conversation. Hey, Esther, what are you listening to? It seems like you're really into that music. So if you're into something, you're really enjoying it, and sometimes we can notice people. Getting into music because they're closing their eyes, maybe they're playing air guitar or something like that.、Mm. We can really tell that. Oh, you must be really into that music. You must really enjoy it. There you go. So she pauses the music, which is nice. She's not yelling while the music's playing. She stops the music briefly using the special button called pause. Those two lines that run parallel. It's from a playlist generated by the streaming platform. Esther tells Oliver. So this is a playlist that she's gotten from the. Service. It's not something she created. It was created by the streaming platform, by the software itself. It's tailored to my listening habits, and I find it helps me concentrate when I'm working. Very interesting. So this is sort of individually created for Esther. It's kind of the、uh, computer using its knowledge of the songs she likes, maybe adding in some similar songs it thinks she might like, and it's kind of creating this for her, only her. Well, I mean, it could be for other people, but. It's Created based on the data that it knows from how Esther listens to music and what music she likes to listen to, and she finds it helps her concentrate when she's working. So it really helps her focus on her job, focus on what she's doing. To concentrate is to use your mental energy, especially to really use it in the most efficient way on one subject, one topic, one activity that you are doing. So she's not going to be distracted. There won't be commercials there. There won't be loud. Songs that she doesn't like, and she has to stop the music and find another song. No, this basically helps to block out the sounds of the world and also entertain her, so that she can really use her mind to focus or concentrate on her work. Right. So again, she's using a streaming platform, and it probably uses a kind of algorithm and keeps track of her choices in music. Maybe she listens to the Beatles or the Rolling Stones or the Kinks or whatever. So this particular platform can tell. Oh, she. She's really into British invasion music, so it probably comes up with other music to play for her, like the Dave Clark Five or whatever. And she can hear all those songs. I'm not saying that's what she is listening to. It's a possible example there. But again, the platform has created this. Playlist for her. It's tailored to her listening habits, and then she can concentrate when she's working. Oliver says that's cool. That's really neat. So it's like your personalized music mix. So if something's personalized, well, it's tailored to the individual. Like if you listen to radio stations, it's not very personalized. They're playing music for pretty much anybody. It's for the wide audience or just the public in general. But if you listen to a streaming platform, it will. Personalize the music for you. Maybe you're into drum and bass or something.
something. So it will personalize the、uh, playlist for you and play the kind of music you like to listen to, and it won't distract you with other things like blues and jazz and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. We might also use the word customize in the same kind of way. It's created just for you by adjusting a few little things to exactly match your taste and your preferences. Esther says exactly when she listens to Oliver sort of explain how he understands this. That is exactly right. He is totally correct. It is a personalized music mix. Exactly says Esther. It's amazing how it—that's the algorithm, the computer program, and the service in general—how it can predict what tracks I'll like based on what I usually enjoy. There you go. Yeah, it is quite amazing how this software that is, of course, not a person does not know you, is not able to see what CDs you have collecting at home or something. It can still then predict what tracks or songs we can often say tracks in place of the word song, especially if we're talking about the song in a recorded medium like a record or a CD track. They might have numbers, and of course, online the software is guessing or predicting. Predicting is kind of guessing, but with a bit of knowledge. It's kind of an educated guess, I guess you could say. We don't know exactly, but this has happened before. We have a bit of data about it. Any time you watch a weather forecast, it's a weather prediction. Scientists taking the science that they know and doing a little bit of guesswork based on past events and history and their wisdom to kind of make as good a guess as possible. So this will sort of predict or guess the songs that she'll like based on what I usually enjoy. So if she requests a bunch of Taylor Swift type singer songwriters, the、uh, algorithm will give her more of that style of music. I've discovered so many great new artists through this feature. That's one thing that my friends who like these streaming services really like and love about them: finding new music. You know, discovering new artists can be kind of a full-time job. We all don't have time to, you know, read music magazines and things like that. So having this computer program kind of do it for you and say, "Hey, if you like this, you like this, and this is brand new. It just came out two weeks ago, or something like that," can really keep you on the cutting edge of new music. Right. It keeps track of what you listened to before, and therefore it uses this kind of algorithm and determines what you might like in the future. Esther is very happy about that. She has discovered lots of new songs and artists through this particular feature. And Oliver says it's like having your own DJ curating music just for you. So here, curating is from the verb to curate, which means you select, you organize, or you choose, and then you look after things. And、uh, this can happen in a museum. Someone can curate items in a museum. It can keep track of those things and organize exhibitions. And in this particular case, to curate just means to basically tailor that playlist for the individual. And in this particular case, Oliver says, "Hey, it's like having your own DJ playing the songs that you would enjoy." Okay, that brings us to the end of conversation number three. Let's now listen to conversation four: checking on a cancellation. Four. Checking on a cancellation. Oliver calls Cinemania's customer service number when he notices an issue with his cancellation. Thank you for calling Cinemania. How can I help you? Hi. I recently canceled my subscription. However, I'm still seeing my account as active with no cancellation option available. So I'm a little confused. Did the cancellation actually go through? I'd be happy to check that for you. Could you please tell me your account ID? Yes, it's three two five one dash zero nine dash six six three two. Okay, I've just pulled up your account information. You did cancel on March seventh. However, our system processed a payment on March first, so your subscription will remain active until April first. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thanks for clarifying that for me. I appreciate it. 第二部分来看到 cancellation 这个名词，意思是取消、撤销，也可以是废除的意思。例如 ，The concert cancellations took place because three band members were sick. 那场演唱会取消是因为三名乐团成员生病了。再看一个例子 ，Bad weather caused many flight cancellations this week. 恶劣的天气导致这周许多航班取消。下一个介绍名词 option， 它的意思是选择或是选项
Li Zhu. If you like live music, Chicago has lots of options: jazz, rock, hip hop, pop, and more. 如果你喜欢现场音乐表演，在芝加哥有很多选择：爵士乐、摇滚、嘻哈、流行乐等。或者 ，there are several options for public transportation, and all have their pros and cons. 大众交通运输有很多种选择，而每种都有各自的优缺点。另外，在这个字的字尾加上 a l， 就会变成形容词 optional， 表示可选择的或是非强制性的。例如 ，Travis enjoys taking optional courses because he can learn various knowledge from them. Travis 喜欢上选修课，因为他可以从中学到各式各样的知识。或是 ，Wearing a costume to the party is optional, so don't feel pressured to do so. 变装参加派对不是强制性的。所以不要感到有压力。最后是动词 clarify， 指的是阐述、说明或是使清晰易懂。可以说 ，I don't understand what you are asking, so could you please clarify your question? 我不懂你在问什么，所以可以请你说清楚你的问题吗？嗯、okay, so in conversation number four, we've got Oliver talking to a customer service representative, and of course that is somebody from Cinemania, and he's checking on a cancellation. So here, cancellation is when you actually cancel something, you stop using something. If you subscribe to a magazine, for example, and you're、uh, not really reading it, you don't really need it anymore, then you can cancel or have a cancellation. All right, because of course Oliver wants to get rid of one of his streaming services. We remember this from our first dialogue. Oliver, it says, calls Cinemania's customer service number when he notices an issue with his cancellation. You'll remember in our first dialogue, Oliver was going to switch from Cinemania to another streaming service. Cinemania had lots of movies and TV shows. He wanted more documentaries, so he switched over to another one. And of course, he wants to save money. He doesn't. Doesn't want to pay for Cinemania when he's not using it, so he wants to cancel his subscription. So he calls up. Someone answers the phone. Thank you for calling Cinemania. How can I help you? Says the helpful person on the other end of the line. And Oliver explains his problem, what he needs help with. Hi, he says. I recently canceled my subscription. However, I'm still seeing my account as active with no cancellation option available. So I'm a little confused.、Uh, okay, this. This can happen oftentimes when we're canceling things, especially just using a computer program. We're not quite sure if it's worked. We assume it does, but then we check a few days later, and ooh, nothing seems to have changed. What's going on here? That's kind of the situation he's facing. He's canceled the subscription. But he's still able to use it. His account is still active, and there is no cancellation option available. But he thought he canceled it. So what's going on? An option here is a choice. I guess in the past, when he looked at it, the last time he did, it said, "Would you like to cancel? Press this button or something like that." Now that option, that choice, that other thing that he can do, is not available anymore. So I thought I canceled it, but now it says I can't cancel it. Has it been canceled? I'm confused. Right, and、uh, he goes on to say, "Did the cancellation actually go through?" So he's probably still being charged for this account, even though he canceled it. And he wants to know if the cancellation was actually successful. Did it actually go through? So in this particular instance, the phrase "to go through" just means to be successful. Did it go through? Did it work? Was it successful? Go through could also mean to endure something. Like for example, I know I have to tell my girlfriend I need to break up with her, but I just don't want to go through with it. I just can't get myself to get the courage to tell her that I found somebody new. I can't go through with it. I just Can't do it, but in this particular case, it just means was it successful? Did it go through? I'd be happy to check that for you," says the customer service rep. "Could you please tell me your account ID?" This is a pretty typical customer inquiry question, so of course. The customer service representative is happy to check, but they need to know exactly which account, which person they're talking to here. So they need some information. The account ID. You might take an ID card 
number. You might take the person's name and birth date or something like that. But anyways, this is just to give the、uh, customer service agent the ability to find exactly which person we're talking about. So Oliver says, yes, it's three two five one dash zero nine dash six six three two. Tapity tapity tap on the computer. Okay, says the customer service representative. I've just pulled up your account information. I've pulled it up. I've found it. I've accessed it. I've opened the file, and here it is in front of me on my screen. I have the ability to see this information. I have something to tell you. You did cancel on March seventh, so that is correct. I guess that matches Oliver's memory. However, our system processed a payment on March first, so your subscription will remain active until April first. So you paid for a new month for the month of March on the first day of March. You cancelled on the seventh day of March, but we won't just cut you off at that point. You paid for a full month. We will give you the full month. Your account will remain active until April first, and I guess on April second at midnight, when he turns on his TV or whatever, he will no longer be able to use Cinemania. And hopefully he'll be able to use his new platform. And Oliver says, "Oh, okay, that makes sense. That's logical. I understand. Thanks for clarifying that for me. I appreciate it." So here we've got the verb to clarify. That just means to make something clearer, to make it more easily understood. So he was confused. He couldn't understand why he was still receiving content. And he thought he had canceled his account, but he still had an active account. But the customer service representative has explained everything for him, and now he's clear on that. Thanks for clarifying that for me. Thanks for making things clearer. Now I understand, and our phone conversation can end now. Thank you, and have a good day. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation. Here comes Hanny to clarify some more things for you right now. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。在课文第一部分的对话里 ，Esther 她一边工作一边用耳机听着音乐。那么 Oliver 就问她在听什么。It seems like you're really into that music. 看起来你真的很喜欢那个音乐。好，那我们先补充一下 ，be into 加上名词或动名词就可以表达非常喜欢什么什么，对什么非常有兴趣。那这边我们要来复习一下连缀动词 seem 的用法。seem 表示似乎、好像。那以下会介绍几个常见的用法。第一个呢，我们可以用 seem 加形容词，像 Amy seemed upset。This morning, Amy 今天早上似乎不开心。第二常见用法是 seem like， 后面可以接名词或子句。例如 ，It seems like she's determined to win. 她似乎有必胜的决心。那第三个，我们可以用 seem。As if, 或是 as though 加上主词加动词。举例来说 ，When they first met, it seemed as if they had known each other for a long time. 他们初次见面时，仿佛像是已经认识彼此很久了。第四个补充的用法是 seem to 加原形动词，像 everyone seemed to enjoy the show， 大家似乎都很喜欢这场表演。那注意一下，如果把动词的部分改成完成式 seem to have 加 P P， 这时候则表示说似乎已经怎么样了，用来只说动作或是事情已经完成。举例来说 ，the problem seems to have been solved， 那个问题似乎已经解决了。那第五个补充的常见句型是 It seems that 主词加动词，例如 It seems that Dave is the right person for the job. Dave 似乎是那份工作的最佳人选。好，那么对话里面的 Esther 她听的是串流平台生成的播放清单，她就提到说，这是根据她平常喜欢的音乐来预测她会喜欢哪些曲目。文中用到动词 predict 来表达预测或是预言。我们来学它的字根，看到 D-I-C 或者是 D-I-C-T 这一类字根表示说话、讲述。那在 predict 这个字当中，它的字首 P-R-E 表示之前。事先或是在什么什么之前，那么 dict 是说话。我们在事情发生之前就先说出来，应该可以联想到 predict， 它有预言、预测的意思。顺便补充两个这一类字根的单字，第一个是 dictate， 它的字根 d i c t 表示说话，那么 a t e 是动词字尾，合在一起 
dictate， 它就有口述或者是命令啊、规定、决定的意思。我们如果把字尾一去掉，再加上 o r， 变成 dictator， 则可以表示独裁者。同学们可以试着联想，只有那个人说了算，那就是独裁者了。好，那第二个补充的是 verdict， v e r 表示真实。D I C T 表示说话，那合在一起 ，verdict 可以指根据事实或调查做出的这个意见啊、结论，或者是裁决，像陪审团的裁决。好，那以上今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天单词吧。Generate the advertisement is expected to generate a significant increase in sales. Concentrate Owen found it hard to concentrate with the noise from outside. Predict. To predict the future trends in the market, we need to analyze consumer behavior. Option: Nita carefully considered every option before making a decision. Clarify: The report aims to clarify the complex scientific concept. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.